you more than me, but when I was 18, I started seeing the destructive effects of alcohol. Uh, I saw people die when I was 18 from, from alcohol-related illness as a first-year student psychiatric nurse. And uh, a few years after that, I was foolish enough to start drinking myself. I've now stopped. Um, but alcohol is like a huge, a huge global issue, really, I, I think. Um, and and, and you, you are a psychiatrist, you, you're an addiction specialist. Um, and I know you have a particular interest, it could be said uh, disdain perhaps <laughs> for alcohol. Do tell us how you got interested, basically. Well, you, my story is rather similar to yours. Um, I, be, before I went to university, what I wanted to do was to drink, but the pubs were quite good at excluding, <laughs> excluding under 18 year olds. And then my very first day at, at university, um, there were nine students um, in my college at Downing College, Cambridge, doing medicine. And we do what groups of students do when they went out on their first night. We went to the local pub and we had a few pints. After three pints, I was, yeah, I was a pretty, uh, I thought I'd asked enough because I, well, I hadn't really drunk before. But then we went back to college and because we had to be in by 10.30 because they closed the gates and uh, you needed a special written permission to stay out after 10.30. We went back inside, someone got out a couple of bottles of wine, people started drinking, I didn't, I sat around chatting. And then a couple of hours later, one of the students started crying and wailing and saying, you know, he wanted to die, he was so miserable and so unhappy. And I, and I, I thought, wow, he's going to commit suicide. And I said, should we call an ambulance? And and one of the other guys who knew him from their school, he said, no, he's always like this when he's drunk. And I, <laughs> and that that shook me up in two ways. Mm -hmm. Firstly, because, you know, really he shouldn't have been drinking at all. He only just made it old enough to... And secondly, wow, you know, the power of alcohol to turn someone from actually what turned out to be quite a successful career as a doctor. I mean, you know, blighted, I have to say, in his case, by alcohol. But he still made it. And turning from a, from a you know, an A-grade student to to someone who was actually wanting to die. I thought, wow, this is, wow, this is fascinating. Mm. Alcohol changes the brain very powerfully. And, and of course, then, you know, when I became qualified a few years later as a doctor, every day you, know, you would see yeah. someone who was damaged from alcohol. You know, half the orthopedic wards are <laughs> occupied by people who've had accidents under alcohol. Mm. On, on our uh, nurses station where the doctors aren't allowed on A&E where we make up the drugs, there's normally a few bottles of confiscated uh, alcohol, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bottles yeah. of vodka and things. I mean, I mean, alcohol is just like everywhere. It's ubiquitous. Um, yes. You know, one of the regrets in my life is, is, is making light of it, joking about it, you know, as people do. You know, just this following on with my cultural norms rather than thinking about it objectively. It's, mm -hmm. It really is a powerful drug. And we talked about that tragic case there, but you know, what you might call ordinary people can also yeah. be dramatically affected by alcohol. It's, it, it's a powerful yeah. drug. And uh, what I'd like to know is, how is alcohol actually working in the brain? Hmm. Well, before I just tell you that, which I obviously want to do, I'll just tell you a statistic, which I think a lot of people don't really understand. Mm. Um, uh, alcohol globally kills over three million people a year. That is more than the total of all, apart from tobacco, all other drugs put together. Yeah. And, and so, yes. Well, all of the drugs that people take for the buzz, for the fun. Yes. Yeah. Whether you use opiates, cocaine, amphetamines, whatever. Cannabis, yeah. Cannabis. Yeah, I mean, overall, alcohol is at least three times more than all other drugs put together. So, yeah, that just tells you it's a massive problem. Yeah. But also, of course, it's, it tells you that people like to drink because no one's forced to drink. So people choose to do it without properly understanding the harms. And, mm. and you know, the reasons for that or we can talk about in a minute. But, but to answer your specific question, what, what happens when you drink? Well, it depends a lot on whether you're a seasoned drinker or a, a, innocent, a naive drinker. Mm. You know, I, if you do an experiment on a, a, a baby or a child and you just put your dip your... Uh, your finger, say, into a, you know, into a, a whiskey or a vodka, and put it on their tongue. They will. It's very aversive. 
No, in fact, people people say, I, you know, I like alcohol. I say, you don't. You've probably never ever drunk neat alcohol. All the alcohol we drink is flavoured to take it, yeah. to take away those, you know, th- those bitter, sour, toxic effects on the tongue. So, so, but over time, of course, people who become experienced drinkers get to know that the taste is associated in a few minutes with the pleasure. So eventually, mm. people who, as a child, would spit out a a fifty-pound bottle of you know a mouth of a fifty-pound bottle of claret. When it, when they get to our age, they savor it because they've become so sophisticated and acquired you know the relationship between the taste and the effect that they they now revere it rather than find it aversive. So so, so for for people who drink regularly, the the smell and and the flavor are immediately begin to recreate in the brain the experience, the desired experience, and then over and then. As it slows, slows down the, your gullet, and of course, it actually with spirits, that's even more of a, an interesting aspect. Because there's, for people who drink a relatively neat scotch, there's that burning sensation in the back of the throat, which actually is, for many people, a good sign. They look, they like that. That makes them feel warm and flushed. And, and the alcohol then trackles down into the stomach, gets absorbed into the bloodstream, goes through the portal uh, vein into the liver. And it gets broken down. Part of it gets broken down uh, to acetaldehyde, but some of it doesn't. And what doesn't gets up back into the systemic circulation, gets into the brain. So within about five to ten minutes, alcohol has gone from your mouth to your brain. And there it begins to do what most people drink for, which is relax you and, and calm you down and take away particularly social anxiety, the anxiety that we all have in social situations, which, of course, is you know where most people drink. Most people drink in social groups to to avoid an anxiety well m- m- many don't i've certainly uh <laughs> i don't know how cathartic people want this session to be but you know I- I've, I've drank on my own purely for the effect on the brain you know, purely for that yes and that's i have to say that's um thanks for saying mentioning it because but one of the the points i make in in, in my book is that solitary drinking misses most of the value of alcohol yes yeah. you can you drink by yourself to get basically numbed yeah. or to relax but then get numbed but it's a uh, it's a dangerous thing to do and that's, you probably realize that yourself in time and have stopped yeah i've realized that and mention your book there david uh, drink um now <laughs> question mark drink question mark. Dr- drink drink <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um it's I mean, y- y- your many years of experience comes through in this book, uh, but it- it's eminently readable. I think it was only about seven quid, eight quid from Amazon or something. So, yeah, um, I, think, I, th- I think this book's for two for two types of people. To be quite honest, I think it's for people that drink, so they can understand more about what alcohol is doing. And I also think, probably even more importantly, the other group that this book is useful for is those that don't drink read this before you start mm. because in medicine we have a special word for that it's called informed consent yes. special two words yes. so read this and then decide if you want to stop start drinking or not uh, my advice would unequivocally be if you haven't started drinking whatever you do do not do not start if you haven't started already but if you do that that adds a lot of uh, layman's context um Thank you. Uh, yeah, can I just say the book yeah, is please. the book is designed is you can there's thousands of books on the wonders of alcohol, and <laughs> yeah. hundreds of books on the dangers of alcohol and the value of sobriety, and this I just try to tell the truth. Yeah. For some people, alcohol is very dangerous. Fifteen, twenty percent of drinkers will end up becoming dependent. Yeah. We can predict some of them. I mean, the point is, if if your father was an alcoholic, yeah. you're more vulnerable. And um, it was your brothers and sisters as it runs in the family so it's clearly a genetic aspect so if you're vulnerable if you if you if the only time you can relax and socialize is when you're drinking wow then you've you know you're at high risk of becoming dependent because socialization is something you do all the time so yeah. so be aware try to work out why you drink and my one of my key tips is only ever drink a drink that you can reflect back gave you some benefit because if it's not giving you benefits it's harming you mm-hmm. 
I think there's a lot of psychology here as well. I mean, the whole psychology of addiction, but the stimulus response whole thing. You mean, you know, you, you go into a bar, you might maybe order a pint of real ale or whatever, it, whatever your tipple is, and you sort of sit there and you look at it. <laughs> and, you know, the, the effect's almost starting before you've taken the first sip, isn't it? Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, when you see, the, you know, when you see adverts for booze, that's yeah. why I'm... I wish I wish we would ban adverts for booze. Yeah, I start, you know, on a warm day, you know, you see a, a beer with a you know, a bit of condensation. <laughs> yeah. I'm salivating before. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, you you become really very strongly conditioned to alcohol. Absolutely. Yeah, and then there's always an excuse. Oh, it's a hot summer's day. I need a drink to cool me down. Oh, oh, it's a cold winter's night. I can't go out. I might as well have a drink by the fire. <laughs> warm me up. You know, it's. Uh... <laughs> Yes. I'm reminded, you, you, um, you, you and me all remember this, but uh, there was a great film called Ice Cold in Alex. Oh, boy, yes. Indeed. Where jo I... John Mills put his, he hacks through the desert for days on end with a, with a what, 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 what's that called anyway? I, m I remember I fancied her for years, the nurse in that video. In that film. <laughs> Gene, Sim, Gene Sims. Gene Sims. <laughs> yeah, yes. and, you know, German. they, they the hack through the, <laughs> yeah, they hack through the desert, they fight off the germs, then he pours the lager. And he runs his finger up the side of the glass and he looks at the lager and just... But I can relate to that. I can now. I'm already... I, I can taste it. 